Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that was the inspiration for Nina's 99 Luft Balloons. My name is Cody, and I'm here today to share with you my top 10 games of 2014. Now, a few weeks back, I wrote a top 10 board games of 2014 for the Deseret News. You can see that at discriminatinggamer.com uh, on the Deseret News stories page. This list is going to be slightly different because I, I kind of went with more some some family oriented games there. And in this list, I had some games that I thought were maybe just a little bit too mature, some of the themes for younger players. So I didn't think it was appropriate for that list, but these are my top 10 favorite games, my personal favorite games of 2014. So let me go ahead and first give some honorary mentions. Uh, Legendary Villains from Upper Deck, uh, I had a lot of fun with. Age of War, a great dice rolling game from Fantasy Flight Games was fun. Imperial Stars 2, which was a war game, a space war game from Victory Point Games was a lot of fun. Tiny Epic Kingdoms from Gameland Games, a uh, very small kind of 4X game that, that packs a big punch. Um, and finally, Valley of the Kings from AEG. It was a great little deck builder, kind of set in ancient Egypt, and that was a lot of fun as well. And now, my top 10 games of 2014. So number 10. This was a game that was a tie-in with uh, one of the bigger movies that came out this year that, frankly, I was not a big fan of the movie, but I really enjoyed the game, and that is the Battle of Five Armies from Ares Games. Battle of Five Armies, of course, is based upon the book The Hobbit and then the movie uh, Battle of Five Armies. And one player takes on the role of the free peoples, the dwarves, the elves, uh, the eagles, while the other player takes on the role of the goblins and the evil players. And it's got a real fun system. It's based on the War of the Ring game, which came out a few years ago, but it's got a fun system where you roll dice to get certain actions. Um, it, it's just a good strategic light war game that uh, really packs a punch. There's a lot of fun things you can do, and it is highly thematic, uh, more thematic toward the book than the film. And I really enjoyed it. So that is my number 10 the Battle of Five Armies from Ares Games. My number nine was a semi-cooperative game. Uh, this is from Privateer Press. It is Level 7 Invasion. Now, Level 7 Invasion kind of picks up where the previous games left off. Level 7 Escape, Level 7 uh, in Omega Protocol. And in Level 7 Invasion, essentially players have to work together in order to defeat a, an alien invasion. And you take on kind of the roles of world leaders, um, you know, North American Coalition, South American, European, Asian, African. And you have to work together because you have to trade resources, you have to make decisions on what sometimes you know what part of a super weapon to build next you've got these critical decisions but at the same time you have to play event cards and you have to decide what's not going to screw me over but it's probably going to screw somebody else over so there's a little bit of looking after your own self-interest and particularly when you're trading as well so i think it does a good balance there it's not a perfect game but i really enjoyed it i love the theme love the components and gameplay can be quite intense and so i i really enjoyed level seven invasion for privateer press <laughs> My number eight is a deck builder game. It's a really quick deck builder game, and it's a really fun deck builder game. I am speaking of Star Realms from White Wizard Games. Star Realms is this great two-player deck builder where you're attacking each other, and you each have uh, kind of authority points, and you're trying to attack each other's authority points and knock them down to zero. The game plays in like 20 minutes, half hour tops. It's incredibly quick. It's intense. It's fun. It's a deck builder. A lot of luck, a lot of randomness with the cards, but still, tremendously fun game. I really enjoyed it. Good head-to-head -head action there. That is Star Realms from White Wizard Games. <laughs> My number seven is a game that was based upon one of my favorite IPs, one of my favorite TV shows that just recently wrapped up, and that is Sons of Anarchy, Men of Mayhem from Gale Force 9. Now, in this game, two to four players can take on the roles of the various gangs in the show. You can be the One Niners, the Lynn Syndicate, the Mayans, or Sam Crow itself. And what you're going to do is you're trying to occupy various locations, but when you go to these locations, if somebody else is there, you can battle for them. The locations give you certain advantages. It's kind of a worker placement game, but you're fighting. Uh, there's combat involved, dice rolling for trying to take those places, and you're, you're ultimately trying to make money. And there's some fun and interesting ways you can do that. It's a very fun game, but it's a little, little on the more uh, adult side. Some of the locations are like a porno theater and, and, and you know, adult bookstore and those sorts of things. So 
I wouldn't include that as a family game, but it's a very, very fun worker placement game with combat, and I really like that quite a bit. So that is Sons of Anarchy, Men of Mayhem from Gale Force 9. My number six game kind of took me by surprise a little bit. I really, really, really um, have no interest in racing, race car driving. It's just, you know, not my thing. A lot of people like it, and that's great. It's not my thing. And when I first heard about GMT's Thunder Rally, I, I didn't think much about it, but I started hearing a lot of really good things about it. So I was able to procure a copy, I played it, and I fell in love with it. Thunder Alley is a great racing game. It's just a great game where you're moving your cars around a track, but depending on the cards you play, you are probably going to move other cars as well. So everybody's invested because even when it's not your turn, some of your cars are going to move, and you control about you know three or four cars on the uh, on the board at any given time, and it's kind of the sum total of all your cars and where they place that gives you your final score. Really, really fun game that uh, surprised me how much I liked it. That is Thunder Alley from GMT Games. <music> Number five was one of these games that was highly anticipated in 2014, and it's kind of controversial because some people don't, you know just think it's a so-so game. I really enjoyed it. You could call it a worker placement game, but I think you need to call it a worker manipulation game. And that is, of course, Five Tribes from Days of Wonder. Um, it's a great game, and it's one of those games where there's a victory point salad. There's so many ways you can gain points and so many ways to win that it really keeps you on your toes. And you, you, Different players can be playing different games. You know, Some people are going for the yellow meeples. Some people are going for the location tiles. Some people are trying to collect money. There's all these different ways you can win, and it's interesting to see whose strategy is going to win. And it's a very, very fun game. So that is Five Tribes from Days of Wonder. <laughs> My number four was another game that kind of took me by surprise because I was a little apprehensive about some of the mechanics of all. Specifically, it has an app. It's a game that has an app. And is it a video game or is it a tabletop game? And the answer is it's kind of both and it meshes them well. I'm, of course, speaking of Gollum Arcana from Harebrain Schemes. Gollum Arcana is a fun, fun, fun uh, tactical miniatures game on a board, but you use a stylus to activate the the uh, miniatures, move them around, attack with them. And the app kind of is a bookkeeping device, but it, it also does. It feels like you're playing a video game on a tabletop. And I can't explain it, but it's a fun, fun game. The miniatures are great. It's a whole lot of fun. That is Gollum Arcana from Harebrained Schemes. Number three is a fantastic game that uses the legendary system uh, that made Marvel such a great game. And this is Legendary Encounters from Upper Deck. Legendary Encounters is based on the Alien movies, uh, the four Alien movies. And essentially what you're doing is you're playing through scenarios uh, that are coming directly from those movies. Though so you can mix some of the elements up and create kind of entirely new scenarios. It's a cooperative game, and it is one of the most cooperative, cooperative games I've ever played. Because players really have to work together, and there are fun and, 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 and unique ways you work together. It's a deck builder, and... As you're drawing cards, you can some of the cards let you loan other players your strength, and that allows you to draw another card. So there's really an incentive to work together a lot of the time, and it's it's really fun. But also, some of the cards are coming down the track like they do in the Marvel games, but here they're face down, so you don't know what's coming. Is it going to be an alien? Is it going to be a, another character? It, it, it's really fun. It's really intense. That is Legendary Encounters from Upper Deck. <laughs> My number two is a fantastic sandbox game. It's a space adventure where players can pretty much, again, adopt whatever strategy they want to adopt. They can be honest traders, just going back and forth delivering cargo, or they can become pirates and wanted. Uh, and this game is uh, it was a Kickstarter, very successful, Zia or Zaya, I'm still not sure how to pronounce it, Legends of a Drift System. Now, in this game... Uh, you just have so many options. It is just so much fun thinking of all the different ways you can score, you can win. It's, it's, it's a great epic space adventure. And it's really cool, too, because as you're upgrading your ship, you're putting these, like, uh, Tetris shapes into your cargo hold of your ship, and you've got to make them fit. So there's almost this, this Tetris metagame going on. It's very fun. A lot of... It's a dice chucker, and I love dice chuckers. If you get a chance, check it out. It is tremendous fun. That is Zia or Zaya, Legends of a Drift System from Far Off Games. And finally, my number one game of 2014... 
I, I hate to jump on the bandwagon here. I hate to make my voice just one in a chorus, but I have to be honest. My favorite game of 2014... Star Wars Imperial Assault from Fantasy Flight Games. It is so much fun. It's 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 a great Star Wars adventure. The campaign game sees these characters, these situations, the story evolve in a fun and unique way. And it also comes with a two-player skirmish game, so two people can just sit down and build rebel and imperial armies and just duke it out. Very clever, very inventive. It's it's really kind of the, you know where where Star Wars X Wing is kind of the space battle side of the Star Wars universe. This is more kind of the 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 ground tactical combat games. It's based on the Descent system. I still haven't played Descent, but it is a lot of fun. I really, 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 really enjoy Star Wars Imperial Assault, and that is why it is my number one. <laughs> Thank you once again for joining us for my top 10 games, The Discriminating Gamer. It's a little late, I know, but better late than never. Uh, please leave a comment here on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on thediscriminatinggamer.com, or on our Facebook page. Please like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and always remember, the best folk are prison folk. Please somebody help me on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going. The discriminating gamer. Okay.